I think Alicia's the kind of person who pretty much trusted her life. And when everything crumbles, it's survival of the fittest, really. It's about getting food on the table, keeping a roof over her children's head, and trying to face the world in a backdrop of humility. He wants to change. I think he's looking for ways to change. You know, it's like you can't take a wild animal and try to tame them. And no matter how much he tries to tame himself, to be the good father, to be the family man, it's not going to work unless he can fulfill those aspirations in politics. Her straightforwardness. She's never afraid to say what's on her mind. Stop it. What? And her strength, mentally and physically. She's a strong woman. I'm really inspired and intrigued by his intense desire to win at all costs. He's not really interested in, in whether it's for the right reason or not. I love playing this guy because he's, it's about creating that balance, you know, um, between ambition and vulnerability. I like her integrity. I like that she is a very smart, accomplished woman who, you know, made it to where she's a senior partner in law firm. Then get out your Rolodex, see what other firm will hire you. She's a very family-oriented woman, but she is also extraordinarily ambitious, and she's gonna do what she needs to do to get to where she needs to be. What's inspiring is actually playing someone normal, I think of him as an alien. He is, he is so alien to me that he is as alien as playing a superhero or a god or a horse. I love doing scenes with the main cast. When we have conference room scenes, they're great fun to do. The guest stars that come in here on week in, week out, it's just amazing. And to work with people like, you know, Dennis O'Hare and, and Linda Eman and Martha Plimpton and, and Gary Cole, and the list could just go on and on. I love those little moments when you get to show warmth or sense of humor. One of my favorite scenes of this uh, second season was just when we won back the firm. We just impulsively started dancing a little together and it was so spontaneous and fun and it's moments like that that I think actually delight the audience too. I also love doing scenes with Mary Beth character with Jackie and with Dreamer uh, with the Becca character because they're just really kind of you know. Hello Mr. Gold. I come in peace. Mm -hmm. Like Yasser Arafat. Those are really fun scenes to do, to be able to say things to people and do things and drop your trousers, for example. Eli, what are you doing? I'm lowering my pants. Why? To make it easier for you to kiss my ass. There are things that I would never ever dream of doing in real life and it's great to be able to have a chance to do such awful things. I had a great scene with Juliana uh, where there had been a flyer put out with me and my husband that really upset my children. And she and I got to just sit uh, in close territory and go head to head about this thing. Um, so I love it anytime she gets to show her teeth through her smile. I just, it's just fun. It's one of those things where you think after two seasons of playing the same character, one would think that character is going to just wear thin. Every day it surprises me and it's a tremendous challenge to play her. I love it, I love it. With these scripts, they're, they're so layered that the more you prepare, the more you find. And so it's about constantly preparing in, in my apartment and in my shower. The hope is that you prepare so much that when you show up on set and you do do the scene, you throw all that preparation out and, and the result is you find some unexpected moments that, uh, you know, when you get with these great actors um, together that, that you wouldn't be able to find on your own um, in the apartment. Frequently, I'll probably run an email to Robert and Michelle, bounce off some ideas. Those changes are then reflected in the new script. A lot of the time, just leave a degree of it to my instincts and just allow the instincts to take over. Yeah, I don't know. I think, um, I think it's a day at a time. You know, it's the way I kind of play the character, which is one scene at a time, otherwise my head will explode. The lines sort of speak for themselves and I can find her within those lines or within what's happening around me. So it's not that I have to do a whole lot to prep for her other than make sure that I'm being honest to the character that we've created. Playing an attorney is something that you can't just fake, so I definitely spend a lot of time um, with friends that are lawyers, going through learning the legal language, watching people in the courtroom. I wish I had a law degree. I have a daughter who's in law school, and now I like call her and say, what is this about? But you really have to look and act like you know what you're talking about. Um, I suppose one of the biggest things about Eli for me 
preparing for him is, to, is getting dressed. Each time I am about to leave my dressing room, I, I always look at myself in the mirror and I see this person looking back at me that I don't recognise. And that is a really great preparation, and I feel I am him. He's complex. He's, uh, like I said, morally challenged. But I, I find that authentic and truthful. I like that about the show, that it doesn't shy away from that. It doesn't try to wrap everything up neatly. That's fun because a character can keep surprising you in that way. And he does, he keeps surprising you. And the more episodes we are shooting, the more I get to really dive into her and feel what she'd be feeling. And she's heartbroken. It's not just about him cheating on her, she's alone now. She hasn't been with someone in a long time. So you have to take into the consideration that she's also a woman with feelings and needs on top of a mother, on top of a tragedy, on top of humiliation, on top of, there's so many layers. Once you know a politician's in your blood, I don't think it ever leaves. And I think he likes the action. That's what gets him into trouble, but he needs, he needs it. It's oxygen to him. There's not really a contradiction when a character needs that, but at the same time needs the love of his family. You can have two contradictory impulses that don't necessarily uh, create a healthy life. But there you have it. A lot of times with this character, he's saying one thing and, and thinking another, and I think that that keeps the other characters on their toes and the audience on their toes and trying to create that balance. It's clear that she wants this position, and she wants it very badly, but she needs to be seen as a good woman. I just try and become him, and I don't, I don't overthink it. And I think that's maybe for me that's the best way. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't try and overthink things. I think I try and go with my gut, and and uh, so I don't. Re I haven't answered that question, but that I suppose is my answer. We are so blessed to have such smart writers. I mean, it's a wonderful give and take. It, it, it's kind of a dream job in that regard. There's such a respect uh, between the writers and actors.